Good afternoon, everybody. Today is day 230. It is September 22nd, 2023, and it is 12 21 p.m. in the afternoon, not in time. All right, so I'm going to check inside my cup holder here. I always check and make sure nothing crawled down inside of there, but this time I didn't. So now I'm going to do that. I kind of push this tape down as if it's going to stick. The weight of the bottle is just too much with the water in it. Um, let me go ahead and get the treadmill started, get everything moving. Um, and then I'll go from there. Okay, so I hope you guys are doing uh, good today. You guys, um, my energy is just low. Um, I'm not tired, I'm not sleepy, but I mean like my overall energy. Like my, I don't know, I usually have kind of like a get up and go type spirit, like when I'm doing something or anything, or when I'm researching to possibly uh, get involved or engage with something else, but that oomph is just not there. I don't know, maybe I'm just in a certain mood today. Um, yesterday was a birthday of a very special person that I miss a lot, and I think Maybe my mood has just been kind of down since yesterday. Um, I was talking about it on um, Facebook to my family and we're all still obviously just sad, losing someone that's just really sad. And so um, I've talked a little bit about it and I think maybe that might get, maybe my mood is just not gonna be like uh, there, you know, for a couple of days, I don't, I don't know. Um, I know I wasn't as sad as I usually get on that day for yesterday for the 21st, but for some reason, I'm also thinking that that's kind of part of why, like I said, my energy is just low. Um, I'm not really trying to have it be there, but I mean, it's there. I don't really know how to, how to change that, how to make it better. I don't know. Um, I'm not in a bad mood, I'm just not in a good mood. I'm kind of neutral today, but I think neutral in kind of a bad way. So um, I'm trying to pep up, but it's just not happening. Um, so I need to get this thing sped up, sped speed, sped, yeah. <laughs> I was like, sped a word? I was like, um, my mind is just completely somewhere else. And then what I was going to talk to you guys about today, I'm like getting tired of the topic, but um, if I decide to do it, I'll tell you guys what it is. If I can get this thing up to speed, I think I don't even want to speed this thing up. Like my mood is like the speed you see me walking, like that's my mood right now. Um, I'm not even, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not even in the mood to be out here today. Um, I know that over half the time I complain and I talk about the time it takes and stuff like that, but it really is like on my nerves today. <laughs> um, normally, it wouldn't bother me that much. Like, oh, I gotta go out here and walk. Um, even if I wasn't recording, but today I, I just don't really feel like doing it. So, um, I know usually I'm a little bit more in a more spunkier mood, I guess you can say. Um, please excuse me today. I just, I just gotta get through this walk. And it just so happens I'm recording. <laughs> yes, 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 I have to record it because it's part of my challenge, right? Um, and then also I was thinking, this gradual speed up thing is really annoying, but I mean, I don't wanna fling myself off to this thing. Okay, so I am up to 1.4, I have no clue. Oh my gosh, like how fast this thing's gonna let me walk today. I don't know if I feel like doing 2.1. My mouth is kinda dry because I told myself to do that Medicaid mouthwash for maybe a couple more days. And so like it, I had this like funny taste on my uh, tongue. I don't know if you guys remember those mint strips and you put them on your tongue and they dissolve, um, something like that. But since I don't use mouthwash like every single day, especially Medicaid, it, it's just like a funny taste. So I want to exactly say my mouth is dry but this tastes funny, right? So I'm probably making these weird faces right now, and that's why. If you guys are wondering, like, what's wrong with the rice? You're making those funny faces. That's why. I can taste something like yuck. Um, 
Plus, I still have to do my salt and lemon, right? And um, so that added to it, like the yucky taste. And so, um, kind of the, <laughs> the wrong day for it to be like that. But I'm gonna get moving, because we, we're coming up on five minutes, and I'm, I'm barely at 1.7. So I am trying to speed this thing up, you guys, but you guys know what happens if I do it too fast. Okay. All right, so we got two more. We're still below five minutes, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this thing up to two within six. Okay, we're at 1.9. Mm. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're at two, and like I said, I'm not chancing today. And we're at five minutes and 14 seconds, and I did remember we have three minutes of a credit, so this will only be a 37-minute walk. Okay, so yeah, but yeah, just to give you guys a heads up, I just, I don't know, like I said, taking out the time to do this and thinking of some other ideas that I have. Um, you guys know I can't do my nails for six months, and we're gonna revisit um, that idea in three to see. You guys know I'm treating part of my nails. And so it kind of opens up some time. Um, yesterday I did practice, but I didn't record it. And I'm noticing that my size 10 brush was better for me using it on the nails for the uh, practice mannequin hand. You know, for those I use the full coverage and yesterday was the first time I glued them on as full coverage and didn't make them as tips. And so within three to four beads, I was able to apply the, um, the powder. So I don't know how it's gonna be with my own nails because like I said, I have six months that I can't do anything to them. Um, can't polish them, nothing like that. I'm not gonna put any clear coat on them. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I did that yesterday and kind of glad that I didn't record it because I left my hair like this and if you're wondering like what's going on with the situation up here, um, <laughs> I think I was telling you guys the other day that I don't like having hair in my face. Um, even if you see me with my little flipped hairstyle, um, especially like when I first started walking, right, I was making more of an effort and I was thinking, no, no, no. I'm sweating too much, it's getting too hot. Clip it up. I don't want my hair sticking to my neck. I think my ponytail was lower uh, once I went from the clip to the ponytail. And so, you guys know in the past week I've been irritated with the like feathering down towards my ears and brushing lightly up against my ears, not knowing what that is, hoping it's my hair. And so, I just decided to put it in a bun. I kept talking about it and I think yesterday was the first day that I actually did it. So yeah, plus my hair, what do you call those? Not videos, um, appointments. Like I said, I told you guys I'm off today. But yes, my hair appointments are coming up in the next couple weeks. And so I'll have my hair re-dyed, uh, have this side re-dyed. And then by the following week, like I said, I'll have my hair cut back into place. So by the 3rd of October, even if I don't feel like my normal self, at least I'll look like it. So yeah, um, looking forward to that. Hoping that everything turns out okay with that. But yes, okay, so it's so funny because, like I said, it's a topic I'm kind of over already. And then I was thinking about my referral credits and how like they're not sticky. And so, in my Rakuten video, or videos, I think I made sure to tell people, make sure whatever you're purchasing is able to receive cash back, that it falls under one of the categories for that store. You can go to your Rakuten account, search for the store, and they should have a list of categories for the different stores, clothing, entertainment, home and gardens, to let you know if you'll receive the cash back. Okay, so there's some help there so that it's not as questionable as to whether you will earn. Um, like recently, we did an online order for the mattress for the big rig. 
And I thought, okay, what do I categorize this as? I thought furniture, right? You buy it in the furniture store? Furniture was on the Walmart list, so luckily I was right. But there was maybe one or two other categories that it could have fit under, like maybe just home. But I thought, is home more of a vase or a lamp? You know, and the lamp, maybe not the vase, but would the lamp be considered furniture, right? So I know sometimes like when you're trying to get cash back with practicing, especially when you're trying to earn your referral credit, you're questioning the item that you're buying. But just try to stay within that category. Be honest with you, whether it's online or in store, if you're sure like it falls under clothing and that store is not specific, so say the only clothing it has listed is baby clothing, say it actually says clothing, even if there's a separate category just for baby clothes, then make it two purchases. That way you can earn your cash back and earn your referral credit. And don't forget, you can refer people too, right? So I was looking about more back into the Racketing Influencer. And I found this page that had this video. And it was talking about um, Racketing advertising. I don't know if it went into Racketing Affiliate. I don't know if that's a whole separate program. But I was wondering, like, why was it talking about Racketon advertising on the influencer page? So, I'm trying to watch where my feet are at. I don't know if those are other programs that once you're approved to be an influencer, you can decide if you want to sign up for those. And advertising is kind of exactly what it sounds like. So there's all these different categories that you can choose from to promote a product or a service. I guess some of it, you might actually have to try the product. At that point, I don't know if you receive it for free or if you receive it for like just paying the shipping or what the case may be. Or maybe the service is somebody is teaching how to do something and all you're doing is advertising the fact that they're teaching. So it could be um, financial growth or something like that. And then maybe the person decides from there. So it could be a free class they're offering. It could be a, a free trial they're offering or whatever they're offering. And I think something like that, that if you get paid from that person or that company, it would be just the fact that you uh, advertise that class or that company that will then give you whatever financial advice or whatever you need or whatever services they're offering. Okay, so I don't think you actually have to try some of the products. I don't think some of the products are physical. Or would that be called a tangible item? I can't remember what tangible means right now. But if it is, then you know what I mean, like a, a physical thing. Um, so if it's a part of it, if it opens you up to it, when you apply to be an influencer, because you have to be approved. You can't just apply and all of a sudden you're a racketing influencer. Um, also, I saw where they have a, a sponsored influencer. And the only thing that was different on that form, there's only like three or four questions you have to answer to apply. The last part was a question of asking you, like, how would you promote? And in this case, I think it was just simply the refer a friend program, period. And so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that salt, it was too much to try to come back up. But at that point, I think there might be a difference between an influencer and a sponsored influencer. Um, For me, obviously, it would be what I've been doing before, which is just making a video about it. I have two about Rakuten, and they're not completely about Rakuten. They are how to combine Capital One Shopping to get the cash back for both. And so I was curious, and I was thinking, would I have to make a strictly separate Rakuten video? And if it's talking about the refer a friend, then would I have to specifically make a video about that? Now when it comes to YouTube, obviously 
you have your uh, thing that you have to mark if it's a paid promotion. Okay, so the thing is, is that if no one signs up with your referral link, then you're not getting paid. So is it still considered a paid promotion, right? Or would you have to go back and mark it like that once you realize that people are clicking on your referral link from there? Okay, so I'm still learning about the whole, just the influencer thing. Um, the sponsored influencer, like I said, might be something separate. And then also, the reason why, right before I came out here, I was talking to my husband on the phone, and um, I remember he's gonna come home early, so just to let him know, so he'll know which way to come in. And so, I was telling him that this, number one, advertising and affiliate might be a part of it or might be something else that you can uh, decide to try within the influencer program, or you can just stick to doing the influencer and you literally will just be trying to get referrals. And then maybe if you go to influencer, the sponsorship, you would actually have to make content or blogs, whatever, you know, on the referral program itself. Um, so the other thing that I told myself, and I had never seen this before, was if you have 10 successful referrals, meaning that they made a qualifying purchase, so they receive their referral credit and you receive yours, then you are automatically considered an influencer. Okay, so if it's automatic, that means obviously you did not apply to do it, right? And I think it has to be within a quarter um, or a certain amount of time, right? But I was counting the referral credits that are pending and there were eight. But I don't know if the one at the bottom of the list was in between July 1st and now because I guess if you want to call it a quarter, this one ends on the 30th of this month. Okay, so I do want to say, um, which I probably should start with when I start talking about this, is if you know that you clicked on the referral link to sign up for Rakuten, you only have 90 days to make a qualifying purchase to get your referral credit. Okay, so if you signed up really close to July 1st, um, you might want to go ahead and make your purchase. Just, I won't say just anything, something that you were going to buy. Keep in mind, you have online purchases and you have in-store purchases. And from what I saw, there's a lot more on there, um, stores on that list. And now they're calling it adding instead of linking because what you were doing was linking the store to the cards that you put in your wallet. Okay, so remember I was telling you that you want to put your cards in your wallet. They have to have an American Express, Master Card, or Visa Card logo on them, including your bank card, in order to be able to add it to your wallet. And you want to add them all at the same time because, like I said, now they call it adding. When you go to the in-store page and you add the store to receive the cash back when you shop in-store, then it's gonna link all the cards together. And then I'm not even sure if those are reusable now. Um, I would have to say if you make a purchase, if you go back to the in-store page, if the store is still on there and you still shop there, after you make your purchase, just go back in and add it back. Especially since you might have forgotten an item on that same shopping trip. You went to the store, I always give the example of clothes, right? So there was a sweater that you went to get or shoes or whatever, you forgot to get it, and you're sure you want it. Like let's say you put together a whole outfit, and let's just say for some reason they were holding your shoes in the fitting room, maybe because you were trying on outfits with it, or maybe you didn't have them hold them up the counter because you didn't want them to accidentally give it to someone else so you kept it and left it sitting somewhere, right? Hopefully when you go back, the box will still be there because by that time, 
they may have put the other shoe in there if they're one of those stores where only one of the shoes is in the box. So you go back in for a reason, wherever you think it might be at, and you're going to purchase it. Well, they were reusable, so I would say uh, go back in there, and if it doesn't say that it's added, add it again. Okay, so that's the newest update I saw was that it no longer says link on the in-store page. Um, if I kind of confuse you a little bit, that's why I made a full tutorial. I gave an example of, I would say, one of the ways to earn the most cash back when it comes to cell phones. If you have a tendency to get your cell phone straight from the manufacturer, then don't forget to go through Rakuten. Um, it goes off of the gross amount before the discount that that company is offering. Okay, so you could easily miss out on about 100 bucks of cash back in your Rakuten account for that phone. And if you didn't activate Capital One Shopping, you're missing somewhere between 65 to 75 bucks on that as well that will be in that account. And you can turn those into e-gift cards. Usually I just remind them to a Walmart when that's the simplest thing to do. Um, also, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I was reading, I read a lot in this, right? Um, so, if you return an item or, well, how do I put that? Well, yeah, that's a good way to put it. So if you return an item, say it's the only item you bought to receive your referral credit, then they're gonna take the referral credit away from you. They will take it away from me. And then you would still have whatever time you have left of the 90 days from when you signed up to make another qualifying purchase. So I think I don't know. Because I was going to say, what if you have multiple items and you return one item? I don't know if it'll trigger to take away your referral credit. You might have to write them in the health center, which you go from the top right, there's a menu, there's a drop down arrow. At this point, they might change it to some dots or some lines or something. You go to health center on that menu, and then you can write them about your missing cash back. You click on that. It's gonna ask you, was it in store, uh, online, what day was it, things like that. And then, if they don't give you the cash back right away, they'll look into it and they'll write you and tell you um, what happened. Either it wasn't a qualified purchase, or you returned it, or you made a return. Okay, so, I honestly don't know. I would have to say, if you're trying to get your referral credit, and you're trying to get it to stick, to stay in the account, then separate your purchases. Make sure it's something that you don't want to return. And if it's Macy's, then you, I don't know, whether it's online or in store, if you have a Macy's coupon, that might disqualify it for cashback or bracketing because you already received the discount. Okay, so of course you get everything else. You get the discount from Macy's whatever points, whatever you earn from your credit card, right? Um, if you shop online, then you'll still get, if it was free shipping, you'll still get all of that. But the safest bet, I think, is if you have Star Money. Star Money's not a discount. It just lowers the price of what you pay. And so I believe if you use your Star Money and you don't use a coupon, I think you can still get cash back from shopping online with Macy's through Rocketune. Okay, so that's probably the simplest I've ever explained it. But yes, as I find out more, because I'm gonna show my husband a video that I saw today, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm going to decide if I'm going to apply to be an influencer. And you know something? I wrote them, and the one thing I forgot to ask them, I believe, is if being an influencer it's different than being a sponsored influencer. Oops. Okay, so what I'll do is I will update you guys on the questions I ask them. I will make sure when I go inside right now that I ask them if there is a difference. 
Um, I'm assuming there is. I'm assuming one's sponsored and one isn't. But the forms look almost the same. It's just that extra question, how do you plan on, I think, promoting the refer friend program, right? So the sponsorship might be, you're specifically promoting just that, right? And it's not just about referring people and getting the referral credit. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to write a list of the questions in my notebook and then also ask them that question and then have a notebook tomorrow to tell you guys. Okay, so the questions I asked were, if you become an influencer, what is the flat rate that you receive for referring to a friend? The next thing I asked them was, can you still share your link where you would earn $30? And sometimes, remember I was telling you guys during the year, like, especially around the holidays, sometimes the referral credit is 40 for you and the person you refer. So, do you still get that? Or does your referral credit just turn to a flat rate? Because I believe the last time I read about it, and even when I read about it today, it was only $25. Um, and if you think about it, if people follow the steps you tell them, or if you say, hey, watch her video, she explains it, even on her walk, um, if they do exactly what I'm telling them to do, and making sure that the item is gonna earn cash back, then if you think about it, if they would've earned 30, if you had not become an influencer, that's $5 less for you, $5 less for them. Now when it's 40, being if it is only 25, you each lose $15, right? So that's a lot to lose per referral. So that's why I thought, Okay, even if the advertiser, practicing advertiser, even if that's included in and you can go in, sign up for that, see if you get approved for the program, and if you do, that would be another way to generate income. Then I thought having the other option to generate the other income is good, but what if you apply what if Rackington Advertiser and Rackington Affiliate is still there and you apply and you don't get approved for either of them, right? Now you're losing um, that amount of referral credit. And if you're gonna say, well, Lori, my referral credit right now, Rackington, I'm already signed up, it's only 25. Um, if they're still doing what they used to do, if you're with them long enough, your referral credit will increase. By how much, I don't know. But I started off at $25. Year round, that was it. And then it switched to 30 year round and 40 around the holidays. So it did increase for me. I don't know if they stopped the increase or not. So you might log into your account one day and see that your referral credit is higher. Okay, so if it's gonna drop down to 25, and if I don't venture into, let's say, the Rackinson Appetizer, then to me it's not worth the five dollars per person. That's gonna add up. Like let's just say all eight people that are pending right now, let's just say they're like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about Rackinson. I haven't got my referral credit. It's on the list. It's in the category of whatever it is, electronics. I need to go into Rackinson, whether I'm gonna make this an online purchase or in store. And uh, so I can get my referral credit because I'm, I'm close to my 90 days. Then if all eight people did that, I mean, that's eight times 30 versus eight times 25, right? So I definitely don't want to lose out. So I didn't really think about that till now. If I don't get approved for the advertiser part, if they're even still doing it, because I think the video that I watched today was a 2023 video. So the advertising is probably still in place, but I don't want to lose on the referral credit. There's other things you get, but I kind of really didn't care. I don't care if I'm able to go. And it's nice to meet people with network, meet other um, influencers. I know that they have giveaways, maybe to certain events, like you and a guest will get to go somewhere. 
but you have to win the raffle, right? If they still do the raffle. So to me, when I reviewed the information the first time, it just didn't seem worth it, especially if my referral credit was gonna be lower. Um, if it's in a flat rate to 30, then I don't know. Maybe it would be worth it because maybe, well, see that, that's the thing, I'll say maybe it will stick more, but it all depends on what the person you refer does. If they don't do their part, neither one of you will use referral credit. Even if you see your referral credit and they don't see theirs yet, then say you got it just because they signed up and then, oh, you know what? They didn't make their purchase, so they take yours away. Like I said, they should wait until they make a qualifying purchase. But apparently, I've been noticing they have it for some reason. Then I would still say, whether you're an influencer or a sponsored influencer or not, if the person doesn't do what they're supposed to do, neither one of you are going to get the credit anyway. So I'm looking at the times where the referral credit is $40 and not $30. That's an extra 10 per person. And each person might want to look at it as that's $10 that I'm losing. As a matter of fact, if you don't do what they say, like make sure it's a qualifying purchase, that's 40 that you're losing. And 40 for the person that refers you, or 30, or whatever the referral credit is. So that's what I'm researching right now, is is it worth it to become an influencer? And if the sponsor influencer is different, what's the difference? Um, so yeah, that was what I was researching earlier and why I wasn't out here sooner. But yes, okay, so, oh, questions, we're still in questions. I asked them more questions, okay. So I also asked them taxes, right? If you become an influencer, whether you're an influencer or a sponsored influencer, okay, and that might be the difference. Being an influencer, you might not have to worry about it. It might be just like when you refer your friends regularly, but let's just say the word sponsored in front of it, oh, now it's income. So I asked them about the taxes. Do they explain like how to do that? Um, do they send a form? And um, what is the situation on that? How does that work? Okay, so I asked those two questions. And um, I don't think I'm missing anything else. Those are what I wanted to know. So I may have included the sponsor question in there already, but I think I'll be able to tell from their response unless they don't pay attention to the whole email. Because I got a little detail this time. I asked very specific questions so that I can turn around and give you guys this information because ultimately a lot of people are, are looking at wanting to work from home. And especially with the Rakuten advertiser, if they're still offering that, and if the way to get access to even just applying for it, if you have to apply, you may not have to apply once you're an influencer, but even if you do, just get access just to apply just to see if you're gonna be approved, then there's money to be made. Some companies will pay you, let's say, $15 per person that just signs up for a free trial. So they don't even have to actually, for sure, you know, say that they want to have it. I think it would be something kind of like, um, well, usually if they're gonna show you your credit score and they claim it's your FICO score, you have different FICO scores anyway. Um, but usually that's what, free for seven days? Because the one thing that they give you besides the report would be the FICO score. Some companies it's free period. Or it could be, let's say, it's like LifeLock or something. And you wanna do like a free trial, right? Um, LifeLock, things like that, the Norton stuff, all that's a little bit more intricate because the whole point is for them to protect you. It's like, say it's identity theft protection, you know, and it's like a 14 day free trial or something like that. Um, so it could be something like that. But $15 per person just for them trying the free trial and they don't actually have to sign up, it's pretty good. So when you look at your earning possibilities with being a Rakuten advertiser, then 
it's worth looking into. But like I said, I'm assuming that's considered income. And so the tax aspect of it plays a part. So I'm not really too, too good with running businesses, but I know enough to know that's the one thing I don't want to get in trouble with is taxes. A simple form is listed, what was made, um, hopefully they'll tell like what has to be reported and it might go from there because it might be a percentage. It might be, you have to report the whole thing. Um, I know for income, usually it's all of it, right? So it could be just that simple. And then I'm assuming some taxes would have been taken out. If it is considered income, right? I mean, YouTube would be the easiest example. When you're a monetizer, when you finally qualify to earn, remember they changed their uh, language for that. Then, remember I was telling you that I was reading about how you fill out your tax information in your account, um, and Google takes care of that, and that's what made me research why, and then that's when I found out that Google owns YouTube. Right, so, um, my research doesn't just go into my interest. I try to make sure my research goes past that. Because the last thing I want to have happen for me or you guys is say you go for it, right? And you find out, okay, so I watched her next video and she clearly stated you sign up for the influencer thing first. Yes, the sponsor and the influencer is separate. It's different, right? Um, maybe I'll, they'll tell me, well, if you get X amount of referrals, then we will automatically start sponsoring you, you know? So maybe you wouldn't even have to start applying for that. Just apply for the influencer, go from there, get used to it, the platform, all that stuff, the practicing, and we'll walk you through everything, right? So they might say something like that in your response. So if then you find out, okay, either A, you are automatically approved to be a rising advertiser or you have to apply. And I can maybe I can find out, do your chances of approval increase with the fact that you're already a rising influencer? Or especially if they approve you for a sponsored influencer, if those are two separate things. And then, of course, here would come, I would have to figure out how to do video share screen because recording a screen, just like I'm recording myself, we both know the quality is not gonna be great. So I thought an app where I can share a screen or at that point, you guys, I might have to go live again. You guys know the last time I went live did not go well. Um, but this time, maybe it'll be okay because I believe you can share your screen. And the minute you stop going live, it turns into a video. So that might be the fastest, easiest way. Because what I don't want to lose is the quality. Knowing me, depending on whatever else I have going on, I might take the easy way out. And I might just be recording my screen and just apologize for the video quality. And just go through it very slowly. Because I know the writing will be so tiny, you might not be able to see anything. So I can go from there. I do know if you want to go live, don't run any tests. Don't do a test live. Because I can tell you from experience, if you forget to, let's say, put Creative Commons attribution because you have music, oh boy. Um, you're talking, live thing is still flashing. You're probably using your laptop or your webcam thinking that you're still live. Little did you know, they already, like, once it stopped being live, they already cut most of it, uh-huh. And then if they were gonna leave any part that you could appeal, you could be missing 30 to 40 minutes of your live stream. That's what happened to me, just to find out that I did not break their policy. So my live video, that's why it's like that. Um, it was fun to make. It was an interesting idea I had, and it totally blew up in my face. So yeah, um, that didn't go well. So as, as you can see, that's why there's no other live videos on my channel, period. So I gotta figure it out. But the least I can do 
since I opened it up for discussion, again, brought it up, and gave a little bit more information about what I found, the least I can do is see if they write me back, and if they answer any of my questions, and give that information to you guys for tomorrow. Um, if I'm not doing a double day, this is only gonna be one video today, if I were, I would go in, gather the information and come back out. But today is just a single video, as usual. And we are close. Okay, so let's see, let's find out. Hopefully, their answer will be, even if it's detailed, hopefully it will be simple enough to where I can just explain it where um, it's easy to understand. Okay, so hopefully I understand it easily and I can figure out a way to explain it. But I'm gonna get out of here. We're 40 minutes, 11 seconds, 1.27. 135 calories, and you guys know that working from home, uh, what's that called? Is it called residual income? I was called residual, but it might not be residual. Um, I don't think it's called passive, I think that's some other type of income, but basically a steady stream of income. Now, well, it will all depend, right? Because three people might go ahead and do a free trial for something and that company's like, hey, here's a fifteen dollars per person. But now that I think about it, that would have to happen on a regular basis, right? So maybe if I'm using the correct word, residual, then maybe that wouldn't be considered residual because it wouldn't be, residual is like what, probably the same amount every month. I don't know if the amount is included in what is considered to be residual income. I just took it as income that keeps generating itself. Kind of like when you Let's say, I don't know, this might not be a good example, but if it is, if you do like a commercial, and if it's in your contract to have, I think they're called royalties, right? So that would mean, um, my general understanding is that whenever that commercial plays, you should be receiving some part of the profit from it. Okay, I don't know what profit is included and what's not. Is it all profit? Is it just the fact that it was aired? Um, is it, because I mean, I don't really know who gets paid for, like when we pay, let's say Dish, Direct, we're paying them for the service of the access to the channels, right, to, to see them. But then you have the show itself, you see what I'm saying? So it's broken down into who receives what, part of the income that comes in. Who's tied together? I guess who's affiliated with each other, right? And who's not? Okay, so um, there's other factors that have to be taken into consideration. So that's the big question, right? Is how do you earn and where's it coming from? But the advertising thing seems just as simple as it sounds. You're advertising for a company if a person does a something, they sign up for a service. Some companies might say, no, a free trial's not good enough, they have to sign up. Um, or they might purchase something, I don't know what it might, I don't know, it might be a bicycle or something and you get a piece of that profit, right? So it's all talked about um, commissions and things like that as well from some companies. So it all depends on what company it is and what they want to provide to pay you. And then, like I said, the whole other aspect of it is the taxes, right? So um, yes, I opened up <laughs> the discussion for a lot of research. But like I said, we'll start with something simple. I'll just see if I have any responses. I will check throughout the day. My computer's usually on for a good portion of the day, um, especially if I'm uploading, which I'm gonna do, right? And then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I should have my book up here and hopefully I'll have some type of information because this might be something that you're interested in. Um, even though, you know, it's not guaranteed because now it would be up to the the buyer is like, but also the consumer, right? I guess I think I'm using those terms correctly. Like I said, my mind is somewhere else. Some of the terms I know, and I just don't remember if I'm using them correctly. So I know usually I'll say, um, I don't know, or I'm sure that I'm using the word right. You guys get what I'm saying, right? But you get my idea, my, my the gist of things, the way I'm explaining it. Okay, so if I use any terms incorrectly, Hopefully I explained it correctly and there's just another word for it. Okay, so I'm trying not to get too technical into that and just give you guys information. You can just kind of run with it because a lot of people want to work for themselves. They want to be entrepreneurs. So this is 
possibly the way a lot of people are, are probably already doing it. You probably can find a lot of more informational videos with more in-depth details and they're showing you actual screens you would see. You know, like once you signed up, like the video I saw today that I'm gonna show my husband. So um, you know at some point that if I do it, then I will get into that. And then um, if there's any personal information up there, usually I try and like block it out. That's a whole nother thing, right? Um, that comes into me doing like a PowerPoint thing and we all know what happens with that. When I try to show a PowerPoint on my TV, the connection between my laptop and my TV just cuts out whenever it wants and I end up having to pause the video. So that's why I've kind of steered away from showing PowerPoints. Um, all that time and energy you put into making one and then you know, you're talking, you're going to click on something thinking it's going to switch to the next page and it doesn't. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? If you record, it's like smack, smack, smack to the, you know, computer and the TV or the laptop, right? Toss it across the room. Um, yeah, those feelings that you have and you're thinking, okay, just take a step back, pause the video, get it back up, and then hopefully it doesn't do the same thing, <laughs> right? So I've had that happen. So that's what happened with some of my other videos. When I was talking about Hawaii, stuff like that, I was like, oh, great. So like I said, plus I'm not that tech savvy. So when you add those two together, um, it takes a lot more effort than you think. So it's like, well, there's an easier way to do it than let me know. But remember, I'm not that tech savvy. So make sure if you explain it to me that just step by step and then I'll try it and see. And if not, I'll just have to deal with where I do it, right? But I will get the information out to you guys. So you guys stay safe. Have a great day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.